Give me a sense of, of the nature of this problem. We, we hear about concussions. We used to talk about people having their bell rung. Uh, it's, it's a lot more serious than that. Well, we don't like to call it bell rung because I think what it does is it, it diminishes the severity or the seriousness of this, as you, as you just said. Basically, right now, there are more kids starting sports earlier, playing year-round, playing multiple sports, boys and girls. So the number of athletic exposures, for example, have increased. As a result, the whole idea of concussion has increased. There is a greater evidence of a concussion increasing in kids. We get more media exposure. Um, and we know more about it because the research of the brain has really um, doubled and increased more than ever. You know, the brain is a, a difficult organ to, to, to study. And just to distinguish between somebody who's taken a bit of a hit and somebody who's had a concussion, how do, how do parents recognize that fact? Is it obvious if your child comes home from school after a vigorous day of playing hockey or football or, or basketball or whatever, how do you know that they just didn't, you know, have a tough day? It's difficult to discern. It really is. And that's why we say, when in doubt, sit them out. A concussion is any significant shaking of the brain. It can be a hit to the head, or it doesn't have to be a hit. It can be a whiplash, where the brain kind of jostles around inside, and then the delicate neural network gets disturbed. And as a result of it, a number of signs can occur. And so on the field or on the ice, on the court, what you might see is perhaps a dazed or glazed look, some dizziness, some confusion, maybe a headache. Um, there are a whole array of symptoms, but you don't have to have them all. Are the, are the coaches attuned well enough nowadays, do you think? The coaches are getting better because more states, including New Jersey, have legislation that now mandates that, especially in schools, for public and non-public schools, that everyone involved in athletics be aware of the signs and symptoms of concussion and pull the child off or pull the youth athlete off the field immediately before other consequences can occur. But I want to go back to what you were saying about noticing it. What's really important is that very often the signs or symptoms may not really show for 24 hours or even later. So if a kid looks fine or an athlete, even a young college athlete, looks fine initially, if you suspected that it happened, don't put them back in because their symptoms may not show till later and we don't want them to get hit again while they're still vulnerable. And there are differences between these, and you've written about this, uh, concussions, serious concussions or, or mild concussions. Well, a concussion, it's difficult to tell the severity initially. You know, in the old days, we say it's a grade one or a grade two or a grade three. We thought that if it was a grade three with loss of consciousness, it was more serious. What we're finding now is some individuals who have loss of consciousness may actually recover faster than those who don't. Everyone is really unique, so there's no cookie cutter answer as to the severity of it until the person's recovered and you know how long it's taken and you know what the symptoms have been. One of the problems, obviously, is that the consequences of this, and they can be long term, can they not? Yes, they can. I, I do want to assure you that most concussions, people recover from them, and that's not that that's not a problem, especially if you deal with it very, very um, cautiously and and you do promote rest. But if you don't deal with it correctly, um, if you get hit again and continue playing, if you have multiple concussions without really getting over... Because we've heard a lot the, about concussion syndrome. Yeah. If that happens, then yes, the symptoms can last for years or even more permanently. At this point, do you think that the sports themselves were protecting our children well enough? Well, I think we're learning how to do that. And parents need to be the best advocates. You need to know, you know, is your team using the most up-to-date techniques in teaching how to tackle or how to check in, in hockey, for example? Uh, is there a real atmosphere of fun or is it, you know, do or die, which can be difficult, especially when they're promoting aggression? Are you using the best helmet, mouth guard, equipment that you can? Now, no helmet can prevent concussion, but it can prevent more serious consequences, you know, brain bleeds or skull fractures, Before I let you go, do we need, I mean, do we have adequate legislation in this state? Do we, do we need national legislation? We're working on that. In fact, uh, Congressman Pascrell um, with Senator Menendez had co-sponsored a bill at the national level. Unfortunately, it passed the House, did not pass the Senate. But as a result of that, the CDC 
Centers for Disease Control and Prevention have been mandated to create a committee, an expert panel, on which I actually serve, to develop guidelines, federal guidelines, for pediatric concussion and, and mild traumatic brain injury in the United States that will then be uniform guidelines by hopefully 2014. Well, let's check back and see where these go. Thank you. You're welcome.